Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm your host, Jess. And I'm your host, Lauren. And today we have, have so much information for you. It's going to be a great live. You might want to get out your notebook and your pencil and get ready to take some notes. But before we get into all of that, Lauren is going to give us our Facebook Live etiquette. Thanks, Jess. So um, to everyone joining in and watching today, thank you so much um, for being interested in this topic. We're here to help you succeed, and we love that you're invested in your own success at Penn Foster as well. So that being said, please like and share if you uh, do like it and um, tag any friends who might also be interested in this topic of um, Penn Foster program success. Um, just don't leave any personal information in the comments. Everybody can see that and you don't want anybody random, um, you know, emailing you or calling you. So um, if you do need to talk to us, either send us a message here on our Facebook page. Um, if you're a current learner, you can call student services as well. That number is 1-888-427-1000. And if you're not a Penn Foster student yet, but you would like to talk to our admissions department and kind of work through your thoughts on any potential programs you might be interested in. Um, you can call admissions at 1-888-427-6500. So with all of that out of the way, um, like Jess mentioned, we have a super exciting agenda. We're going to talk about how Penn Foster works, including how all of our exams and assignments and projects work. Uh, we get questions about this a lot, so um, we'll go through all that today study tips to do your best in your program, how to get in touch with student services and when you should, how to contact your instructors when you need help, uh, the Learning Resource Center and what that's all about, and connecting with other learners and alumni to network and find help, help others and make friends. Um, so let's dive right into it. We have a lot to talk about um, and we'll start with how Penn Foster works. So, you know, at Penn Foster, your classes and exams are completely online and self-paced. So that means you can study, you can take exams wherever and whenever works for you. But there are a few things you need to know about how the exams work. Jess, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So our um, basic exams, you know, you hear the word exam, you kind of have an idea of what that means. But basically, after after each lesson in your class, you'll have an exam. And these exams have no due dates. You can do them whenever you're ready. So if you want to read your lesson one or two or three times before you take the exam, let that information set, set in. You definitely can. Um, the exams are multiple choice, and they're usually about 30 questions. And they are open book, meaning you can use your notes and your reading material if you get stuck on a question. Um, exams aren't timed, so you can take as long as you you need to complete them so don't feel rushed. Um, take your time, make sure you're doing it to your best of your ability. Um, and the exams are automatically graded. So right after you submit your exam, you'll get your grade back immediately. That's the beauty of um, some good multiple choice exams. Um, and you can retake the exam once every 30 days. When once you take the exam within 30 days, you can retake it um, if you would like to. And the, we will honor whatever the better grade is out of your two attempts. So basically, you get one redo within you know a month span for any of the standard exams. And whatever one you do better on, we will honor that grade, which is awesome. That is um, definitely a great feature because I feel like you know a lot of you are used to the traditional school system where you take an exam and you get what you get. And it's always a bummer if you miss a couple questions that you would have known or if there are things that, you know, you could kind of refresh your studying and then get the next time. So it's really nice to have that second chance. And since it's within like the 30 days, it's perfect because within 30 days you could reread your lesson and then take the exam again. So it gives you enough time to, you know, re-review re that material and then jump back in, which is awesome. Um, so that's what our standard exams are like. and but there are also certain exams that are a little bit different and they're called proctored exams. Um, Lauren, do you want to dive a little bit into how the proctored exams work versus the um, standard exams? Sure. So I know this is a little intimidating um, for some of you and uh, we get it, but um, they don't have to be so rough. Uh, we'll kind of talk through how, a little bit how those work. So 
Um, for some programs like college degrees, you'll need to have something called a proctored exam. Um, proctored exams are like finals and not every class has a proctored exam. So already you can kind of do a sigh of relief that you're not going to have to take these every single class and every single time. Um, proctored exams are different that for, than your regular exams in that they are a mix of different types of questions, not just multiple choice, and can count for more of your final grade. Proctored exams can be done online. Uh, we do use a third party remote proctor company to help with this, so it's all um, fair. Proctored exams are timed and depending on the subject may or may not be open book. But you will know ahead of time if you're allowed to use um, any reference materials like your notes and your reading materials for the test so you can prepare. You can also choose to take a paper proctored exam. Um, this process does take a little longer than the remote proctor option because you need to choose and submit a proctor for review. A proctor needs to be somebody who has at least an associate degree, is someone who does not live with you, they're not related to you, and they're not your boss or supervisor at work. Um, so again, just keep in mind that this is only if you choose to take a paper proctored exam, you won't have to go through this process of finding a proctor if you um, are good with having an online virtual proctor. Um, but if you are going to select a proctor to do a paper proctored exam, um, once your proctor has been approved, we will send a copy of the test to their address and they'll set up a time with you to take the test in person. All tests are still timed. Uh, then your proctor will send your exam back to us for grading. And this can take about three to four weeks, depending on how many proctors our instructors are grading at the time. So um, again, kind of just something to keep in mind. I think what is nice about this is you can choose for proctored exams that you may run into. Um, you can choose which option is best for you and how you like to take tests. So um, keep that in mind that you will have a little bit of flexibility there to have the virtual proctor or an in-person proctor um, based on what feels more comfortable. Um, but, you know, and again, not every class has these, not every program has these. So if you are um, wondering about this, um, definitely is something that you should talk to student services about or um, if you're not a student yet, talk to admissions and see um, how many proctored exams you may expect in your program. Um, so then there is another big area of grading um, that we get a lot of questions about, which is how assignments and projects work. So Jess, can you take us through that a little? Yes, absolutely. So now we're past the exams. You know, you hear exam, that sounds a little bit more intimidating. Assignments and projects um, go with you know, traditional school and they also um, exist for Penn Foster as well. So in some of your classes, you'll have assignments like papers or projects, um, like completing a spreadsheet that have to be submitted to um, submitted to us. And just like a regular exam, there's no due date or deadline to submit these. So you do them in your own time, take your time reading over lessons, looking over source material before you, you know, do your assignments, your papers, your projects, and send, send them to us um, all on your own time, in your own pace. Um, depending on the class and type of assignment, you'll find instructions for completing the assignment in your study guides, including how to submit it for grading in the student portal. Um, you know, that's really important because you have to make sure that you know where you have to go once you finish the project to submit it to make sure you get credit and you get and it's submitted for your grading. Um, grading for assignments can take some time, so you won't know your grade right away. It's not as one, two, three, like the exams with the multiple choice, you know, we have to read over it and, and um, grade from there. And if you don't pass the assignment, you'll have the opportunity to fix your work and resubmit. Instructors will send your work back with feedback and suggestions for improvement. And I, I think, I don't know about you, Lauren, but that's awesome because sometimes you don't get that opportunity to get that feedback from your instructor and then get to, you know, make your changes. Oh, absolutely. I had a chemistry teacher in high school that every time we would do a lab, if there was a part on the lab that wasn't correct, she would take the paper, slide it across the desk and just go, hmm. and that was all you would get. And it was very stressful because, you know, your lab team was submitting a paper that you all thought was right, and that's why you were submitting it. 
Um, so that, that was anxiety inducing to say the least. Um, so it is really nice to have this feedback yeah. and it is, you know, I know sometimes it could be a little frustrating to have to wait to get an assignment back, but at the end of the day, like you're here to learn and genuinely develop skills that could help set you on the path to getting the job you want. And so getting good feedback and, um, you know, giving us a little time to make sure that you are really like learning everything and getting the skills that you need um, and that you want and that you can achieve um, is important. So, um, you know, projects like this, they're not, you know, I know sometimes it could be like, oh man, I have to do so much preparation for an assignment, a project, studying, but it's really for your benefit so that you do walk away knowing everything and, and feeling confident in what you've learned. Absolutely. So um, all of that, that being said, there is preparation for these types of things like exams and projects. Um, and we have a couple study tips to share um, to help you do your best in your program. Um, Jess, do you want to go through a couple study tips? Sure, I will start here with taking good notes. Um, when you go into an exam, whether it's proctored or the standard exam, or even any of your assignments that you have to complete, um, it's always good to know that you, you know, taking good notes can help you retain the material better so that you, you know, succeed in all of these different aspects of your grades. Um, but, you know, you say good notes and you don't know exactly what that means, right? What does it mean to take good notes? Um, your notes should be easy to read, hit on the big topics and help you understand what you're studying. When you are looking to take good notes, you have to make sure that your notes are legible when you're writing them down. Um, it won't help if you can't read your notes later on. So, you know, take your time, write things out, bullet point, use your highlighters um, to highlight, you know, top sections. So, you know, you know, when you're scanning through and you're looking during your exam, you know, in its open book and you know exactly where the titles are so that you can find that spot and go right to it. Um, you don't have to write everything down also. That kind of defeats the purpose of taking notes. So take your lesson and break those things down and hit on those key points and write those down because the things that you write down are the things you're regurgitating and that's what's going to stick back in your mind later. Um, but so you know, definitely don't write everything down. It can also lead to a very cluttered notebook and it can drown out the important points. Um, try writing only down the big, like only writing down the big points. If you're taking notes from a study guide, what are the top three key things you learned in a section? Um, that's a great way of keeping yourself short and concise and not cluttering up your, whether you do as a notebook or you write, you know, you type in a Word document. You don't want it to be miles long or a million pages. Um, and highlighting, like I mentioned before, highlighting important points was very, very helpful. When taking notes, don't just reply, re rely on your pen or your pencil or, you know, your keyboard. Adding a highlighter to your note can, to your note taking strategy can help um, highlight important things like vocab you should remember, processes, um, your study guide covers and things like that. It definitely helps to, like I said before, when you're going through an open book exam, when you have things highlighted right up at the top um, and you have all of your key key notes highlighted, you can jump right to them. Your eye goes right to it and it can help you get through your timed exams even a little bit faster. Definitely. And Jess, I love the point that you made about how good notes can help you during an open book exam. So like that's a, that's a really important thing to keep in mind is, you know, an open book exam seems awesome because you're just like, oh, I can look up anything I need and it'll be fine. But um, as someone who's taken open book exams, you definitely still have to be prepared because if you have like chapters of text or something like that, you're not going to be able to find, I mean, there are times so you're not going to be able to find the answers you need and still finish the test. So having um really good notes to help you get to information quickly is very important and then you know even if it is closed book having those great notes to refer back to as you study can save you a lot of time 
and help you make the most out of your study sessions. Yeah, absolutely. So now, okay, you've taken your notes, you've written them down. Now you're going to go back and you're going to study them and you're going to look them over. Um, Lauren, what are some study tips for just actually like sitting down and reading the material and studying? So I think one really important thing to do is to break up your study time and kind of have a study plan. We all know cramming last minute is not the path to success. <laughs> um, <laughs> great to refresh yourself, you know, the night before or the morning of. Um, but that's not really how our brains are programmed to retain information. So um, we definitely suggest break up your studying into smaller chunks of time. Um, whether that's 15 minutes over the course of a week or two, or if you can dedicate an hour, a couple of hours um, in the days leading up to your exam. That's a great way to go about it because it gives you time to, um, you know, read through your notes and like process that information and then also marinate on it a little bit. Um, because I, what I think is the most helpful is when you kind of like think about the thing that you learned in how it makes sense in your brain, if that makes sense. Um, so you want to give yourself time to like let that stew in your mind and then really uh, be able to remember that. Um, I think it's also important to, again, like with kind of studying a little bit every day, you give yourself some breaks so it doesn't feel completely overwhelming, like the night before cram session or the morning of cram session. Feels bad, it's not helpful, and it's just not going to make for a great experience. Obviously, everybody, you know, has timing emergencies where you got to do what you got to do. But um, since you kind of can set your own dates for these exams, uh, you know, pick something that really works for you, where you do have a couple nights in advance where you can study or um, lunch breaks or whenever your optimal study time is. Um, and then Jess, since you're the notes expert, Tell us a little bit about like the best way to process your lessons and study guides. I can answer that in one question and that is carefully. You know, you want to make sure that you're not skimming or rushing through your study guides, your notes or your book chapters. Um, taking your time to read and absorb what you're reading. And if that takes rereading a paragraph one or two times in a row for it to really reinforce in your brain, then give yourself that time and try not to get frustrated when you do read through something and you're like, yeah, I think I might have to go back and read that again. Because I, even though it might feel frustrating, all you're doing is be doing better on yourself by giving yourself that information again and again and again. And for some people, repetition is the key, you know, but even, even so, make sure that you're reading carefully you're reading concisely the sentences are making sense in your brain and they're not just words that you're reading off of a page that don't really string together um and that's the best thing about self-paced classes is you, that you go at the speed that works for you so if you have a lesson in particular that you feel like you know you read through and you just didn't really get it it's not like you know oh well the exam's tomorrow so you have to reread it again in the same night give it a night sleep on it, go back to it the next day and read it again. And more times than not, it's going to make more sense that second time than it made the first time. And you take your exam whenever you're ready. So careful, carefully read and do, do it at the pace that works for you and the way that works for you, whether that's repetition, whether that's writing it down, you know, sometimes for people that helps things stick in their head. However, that works for you make sure you take that time because you have it. It's really good advice. Now, you know, you take your, you know, you, we have, we talked about exams, we talked about studying, um, but sometimes there are things about your class, like logistically, that you may need to get in touch with somebody to figure, figure something out. Um, Lauren, how and when do you think that a student should get in touch with student services? Good question. So yeah, throughout your program, you might have questions about your student account, how classes work, 
um, and many, many more things that you may come upon. Um, and that is exactly what Student Services is here to help with. So you should reach out to Student Services when you need help, when you have questions, or are concerned about anything having to do with your program, tuition, or classes. And you can reach Student Services at 1-888-427-1000. Um, going off of that, another uh, group of people you might want to contact would be your instructors. Um, this you'll contact your instructors when you need course specific help or guidance. So you'll want to definitely reach out to them if you kind of hit a little bit of a tough spot in your course. Don't you know stress yourself out trying to get through it on your own. Contact your instructors. You may also contact them for questions about an exam grade or anything that's just confusing in general. So you can reach your instructors by calling into student services. Again, that number is 1-888-427-1000 um, and they'll direct you to your instructor. Um, or you can set up an appointment to speak with your instructor and you can do that via your student portal. So it's pretty easy to get in touch with people when you need them and you will need them and that's okay. Uh, the cool thing yeah. about you know going online is you can do it at your own pace. You can kind of figure things out in a way that makes sense to you, but it doesn't mean that the human touch um, will never you know not be needed. So we are here for you when you need us to be. I, th uh, I think it's great too that you go right through the student portal and make an appointment with your instructor. You, you know you might just at the end of a lesson, you know, no, you know, I want to call them and just kind of check in and see how I'm doing or whatever. But instead of calling right then and there, you can set up a time and just be ready to talk to them then. And then they could even have, you know, maybe they have your grades pulled up. They can give you some, you know, one on one feedback and that always helps, I think. Definitely. Um, and that's not all we have for resources. Um, we have an awesome learning resource center, and we also have ways that you can connect with students and other alumni. Uh, Jess, do you want to walk us through those very exciting things? Yes, absolutely. So our learning resource center is a gold mine of yeah. resources. It's a digital learning resource center, so it exists online, obviously, like everything else, and you'll have access to program specific articles tips and tricks to help you through your classes. You, you can also help to help find things like how to write an essay, the best way to do that, you know, and you can access the Learning Resource Center 24 seven. So any point um, that you, you know, even if you just decide, you know, I'd like to read some more about what I'm studying and I wanna find some articles, they're there. If you need, you know, the tips and tricks to help you through your classes that, that, you know, we sometimes give you on Facebook Live, but you need them in the moment, you jump into the Learning Resource Center and they're right there for you. And that is awesome. Um, the other resource that we have that I think is probably one of the most important and one of the really, really great resources we have is you can connect with other students and alumni via the student communities. Um, so, at Penn Foster, you're literally never alone between, you know, we have student services to help you. You can talk to your instructors. We have the Learning Resource Center, and then you can also connect with your peers, which is awesome. Um, you can connect with other students in your program, alumni who have gone through your lessons that you're working on now and have graduated, and more in our online student community. Besides building connections, you can join study groups, ask for help and advice, or even just join fun social groups to build online friendships that help you help get you through your program. You know, that's one of the biggest things that we hear about going to school online is that you lose that social connection with, you know, your classmates and people like that. But the student community really does give that back to you in an equally meaningful way, which is awesome. Um, we also have student ambassadors that are always available to help on the community if you need motivation or advice. Um, they're all very friendly and they're all fantastic and they are there to help you and to, you know, show you that you can get through it and, you know, just be that cheerleader for you, which is amazing. So we covered a lot of information, but hopefully you all found it helpful. Um, you know, I think the big takeaway is we do have a lot of support resources and we really, really, really want to help you succeed. You're here for a reason. You have a goal. 
you got to achieve it, find a way to achieve it. So, um, you know, please take advantage of student services, our instructors, the community, social media, the Learning Resource Center, um, all really cool places that are designed for your success as an online student. Absolutely. And if you need any more of this information, we're going to say it one more time. You can call student services at 1-888-427-1000. You might have it memorized by now because we said it a bunch this live. But if you need more information, you can contact us there and there's always somebody available to help you. Well, thank you all for watching. So, that was a lot. Of <laughs> You're, you froze a little, Jess, so I think we uh, talked at the same time. But um, for everyone That's watching. Okay, take it away. <laughs> okay. For everyone watching, thank you so much. We love chatting with you. Um, we wish you the best of luck in your program, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody.